Well, good evening, everyone. I'll welcome you to the new Fane Select Board meeting. It's been a month since we've been together, so glad to have everyone here. On Zoom, we have Jeff Chevalier and Ann Golub, and here we have Katie Johnson Atlin and myself, Angela Litchfield. Has this meeting been properly worn? Yes, it has. Thank you. Additions or amendments to the agenda? I have one. Jane Douglas is here for the Planning Commission, and if it's okay with everyone, she has a report after the zoning administrator, if that's okay. Sounds good. Great. Any other additions or amendments? Just a note that I need to leave at 6.45 tonight. All right, just give us a quick wave before you log off. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. And now we'll go to the approval of the May 6th regular meeting minutes. Is there a motion? Hi, John. I make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Ayes have it. Great. And now we'll go to the road foreman and commissioner's report. Good evening, Jay. So the insurance company for Adam Silbridge has been seeing, sending emails amongst themselves to get things moving. Um, at least they finally started including me, so I see them talking. Uh, the last email was last Wednesday, and I haven't seen anything since. So I did send off another one to them, hoping they would answer me before tonight's meeting, but they haven't. Um, we're working on the new Fane Village sidewalk grant with Wyndham Regional, and we need the letter of support updated that you did last year. Um, nothing new on the Green Iron Bridge work from Fitzgerald Engineering. The new radar sign for West Street's been shipped, so we should see it any time. We have a proposal from Everett Hammond for engineering oversight on the Loop Road culvert. Um, it's a just the location of it. I think it might be a wise idea because we're so tight to Route 30. Um, we might need the engineer to be able to make decisions on the fly. Um, I think it would be worthwhile if we were on a back road somewhere. I don't think it'd be so critical, but right there with all the traffic and and digging right along Route 30, I think it would be uh, beneficial to have the engineer involved. Makes sense. Um, I put the Eddy Road culvert in the pre-application form to Vermont Emergency Management. Um, if it makes it through that round, then we have to do more of a, a larger application that's got a lot more questions. Um, I got a deep uh, email, email that the Depot Road box culvert is being cast, and the first uh, couple pieces, I guess, have been done. So after many, many years, it looks like it's finally underway. Um, and I had Sven from B-Trans in town on Friday to look at a couple of bridge repairs. We should be able to put those out to bid shortly. One is uh, on South Wardsboro Road, right at Grout Road, and um, Hunter Brook and Roy Brooks Bridge. The the during the storm it undermined the abutments, so there he was giving me advice on how we should get those repaired. Great. And then Anne is going to sign on with me on Wednesday, Wednesday to um, listen to the new engineers with their um, phasing plan and so forth to see how they're coming for the gravel pit. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to approve the road foreman and commissioner's report? I make a motion. Uh, I'll Katie, second. Okay. I'll, and I'll and second. Maybe we'll Oh, Katie's going to second. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Discussion. Thank you for keeping up with the insurance company for Adams Hill Bridge. Hopefully someday we'll see something from that. Mm -hmm. uh, Juanetta drew up a letter for the sidewalk grant. And if it's okay for me to sign. You want to read it? Do we need a motion? Yes, please. Yes, please. 
I make a motion for you to sign the letter. Second. I'll second. Thank you, Jeff. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ayes have it. That will go out in the mail. Okay. Green Iron Bridge. Nothing new there. Radar or sign. And the proposal for Everett Hammond. Can we discuss that? Anyone have any questions? Should we go ahead and approve it? Or I'd like to approve it. You making a motion to approve? Sorry, I am making such a motion. <laughs> I'll second that. And Katie will second. Any discussion? I personally think it makes sense to let the engineer have <clears throat> That responsibility for things that go on, like you said, because it's so close to Route 30 and it's going to affect a lot of people during that time. Um, there we got. Um, uh, he's moving it towards Loop Road uh, one foot because of when they did the borings, they ran into something at nine feet that they're not sure what it was yet. So they're afraid that it's sledge or if it's uh, part of the old cement abutments from the original culvert or who knows. Okay. So the, he's moving it ahead of foot. And so this kind of thing is, you never know when you're going to get some snag like that. Katie? I was going to ask, um, do, is there a construction time frame tentatively scheduled in for when that will begin? Um, looks like early July. Thank you. But you'll have yeah. something more formal when it's going to happen so we can get that out to the public. Yep. Um, loop road folks. They're having to get the um, 111 permit from B-Trans and sometimes that takes a couple weeks for traffic. Okay. Um, so he's working on that and then uh, once we get a firm date then we can, he's also working on an alternative bypass instead of going through the, the yard where, where we had it scheduled, we might be able to do the culvert in halves and keep one section open so he's working on that right now okay any further discussion hearing none all those in favor say aye 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 opposed abstain ayes have it and so it just looks like you and everett need to sign it jay yep okay um Eddie Road, any discussion on that? Uh, thank goodness the Depot Road box culvert, years later, is finally getting started. Woohoo! Is um, there any timeline for that, Jay, as far as construction dates? And will um, it be full closure? <clears throat> full closure, yes. Full closure. Um, I believe the earliest that one can go is July. 15th, I think. 7 ish Okay. The new owners of that property are aware that all this is going on, right? Yeah, they had to sign an easement for the power stuff. Um, okay. So, yeah. Great. Uh, and you'll just keep us in touch with all of the bridge work. Anxiously, can't wait to hear what the engineering people have to say about the gravel pit. Hopefully we can get that finished. Um, um, I, I will I also did. send you, um, Renault's are gonna fix the beam that they broke on the roof of the cover bridge. Oh good. And they're gonna give us a couple days notice so that um, people will have to, for four or five hours or whatever, will have to go up over pairs. So. Okay. I'll get it out to you, you guys, so you can put it on whatever social media you got. Thank you. Yep, we'll get that done. 
Um, I was also made aware of some type of pavement disruption on South Warsboro Road from a tree company. Is that being looked at? Trying to figure out who it was that that uh, moved out of there. It it was a brush head on an excavator, and there was the tracks from the excavator on the new the new pavement right on the side of it. So. So you're um, on that. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I was going to stop when the owners were up and see who they hired to do it. Um, I believe it's the people that own the house in the front that, that hired them. Okay. So. Well, that would be great because that's brand new pavement. Maybe. Yeah. Common mind. sense doesn't, uh, doesn't play into things anymore. Uh, no, it does not. <laughs> All right. Anything else for the road farming and commissioner's report? Uh, will you be doing a, a partial mow of the main roads earlier than normal since we own our mowing machine? Yeah, he was out the other day doing a little bit, um, trying to work the kinks out of it. He's got a valve that's sticky and um, wants a mirror on the side so he can see behind him better. Mm -hmm. So we're just keep trying it in little things to see what we do. We had to replace a battery. Um, but yeah, he'll be out uh, going to try to do the pavement at least. And um, then we're going to go from there and maybe on the dirt roads, not go out quite too early because otherwise I'll have to be done a second time. Mm -hmm. So we'll uh, at least get the pavement done. Great. Thank you. Sure. Anything else? Hearing none, all those in favor to approve the road foreman and commissioner's report say aye. Aye. Jeff? Nope. Aye. All right. Opposed, abstain, the ayes have it. Thank you so much, and please let the crew know that we appreciate all their hard work and you as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And now we are going to hear from the zoning administrator, and we have. Good evening. Glad to have you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Good. I didn't test the microphone this time. <laughs> um, I had a visit from our good friend, Michael, and he dropped off an application for a rehearing. He dropped off the site plan that was big enough to read. And I'm assembling all the information. I'll be turning it over to David, hopefully by the end of this week. Uh, David had indicated possibly mid-June to end of June for a date. And I try to determine how we can get it through with the least amount of distraction. Okay. And that's it. It's not a big thing on uh, the cemetery. Katie started her training. Excellent. On, on Thursday and gave her an overview. Uh, she seemed to pick up very quickly different points. Tomorrow, I'm expecting two applications in. I, I told her before she left on Thursday that I was going to have her do the process. I gave her the instruction sheet so she knows basically what the procedure is. Step by step, I ever do one, take it through printing a permit, take the second one and do the same thing. And then I told her to make the notes on the instruction sheet where she feels some improvement could be made. Great. Yeah. So it's going forward. Basically, you know, Dan had contacted me. I was kind of checking up on my estimate for their number of hours. And I indicated to about 20 hours. It looks pretty good. Seems to be working out pretty well. That would seem to work pretty good. Yeah. Great. That's it. Well, I do know we have some gentlemen here that, unless you need to speak about the, um, I just wanted to recognize you both, if you had anything to report back. No? Okay. Anything further for Merle? 
Well, thank you. We appreciate all of your hard work and thanks for the reports and staying on top of all of that. I'm ready. Okay. And now we have Jane Douglas. Welcome from the Planning Commission. Hello. 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 Um, so just wanted to report on a couple of things that the Planning Commission is starting to work on or looking into. Um, one is a short-term rental registry ordinance. Um, we've opted to do it as an ordinance rather than a bylaw change, which is easier. Um, I've, we've basically took in several ordinances from other towns and kind of put them together. But we kind of need a little bit of a question as to kind of how the select board feels about I mean, we've limited it to just short-term rentals. A lot of towns are doing rental registry, so every kind of rental. Um, is there any interest in doing that, or is short-term really the one that's where the issue at hand? Um, that's kind of really the only direction we need, other than we thought we'd ask Katie or someone who's interested in that select board to come to couple of meetings with us to talk about how the language is going, where it's headed, what the type is. It's, it's a couple of pages long, so it's a lengthy ordinance. So just to see if we can get some help in steering us in the right direction here. Begin to make this come to life. Um, Could you discuss some of the pluses or minuses of including all rentals instead of just short-term rentals? Because just asking the question, you know, like that, it's hard to have any context in which to think about it. Well, if you do all rentals, um, it's generally only in the bigger, bigger towns and cities. It really is requiring more time. It means you have to have an administrator who's going to go out and review these, follow up, check up anyone that, that anyone knows is renting and isn't registered to follow up with. So short-term rentals is a little easier because um, one of the requirements of short-term rentals is that they be functioning through some sort of website like Airbnb or VBRO, and they will give us a list of everyone who's registered with us in our town. So it's much easier to find everybody who has a short-term rental as opposed to a long-term rental. Mm -hmm. So it's administratively simpler. So unless there was a specific value in collecting the long-term rentals, you're saying don't bother? Well, I mean, there is, if you want to, you can have a fee for long-term rental registration, too. Um, that is part of what we put some kind of fee on to register your short-term rental with the town, and it would be annual renewal. So there is a question of who would be administering it. You know, who's going to be keeping track of people who have signed up and people who haven't. So, yeah. Who is it in other towns? Hmm? Who well, does it in other towns? Uh, most towns have a short-term rental administrator. They have someone who a part-time or full-time job for towns like Wilmington and Dover, Burke, um, Jay, they have a full-time administrator. Well, that would make sense too because they're ski towns. Yeah, there's way more. <laughs> uh, there's eight or nine hundred short-term rentals in right. Wilmington alone. So it's the other big difference from us and the ones that do a more robust rental registration is that they have the local tax shop, which is the other thing I needed to ask about. The legislature passed removing all restrictions on the local tax option on all towns in this legislature. So as of the 1st of July, we can, I'm trying to find out the procedure, but we can implement a 1% tax option for the town. Wow. Now for towns like Wilmington and Dover, that's how they pay for their short-term rental newspaper, right. is from the, the tax because then they're getting the room tax. Um, they also do sales tax and meals tax. Those of us on the planning commission don't feel any great urge to do a sales tax or a meals tax. We don't have many restaurants in town, and 
we don't have too many businesses that would, I don't think it would really pay. I don't know how, how the select board feels about that. But the room tax would be, definitely be a way to get some income for the town from all these short term rentals. Mm -hmm. But the, the biggest dilemma we face right now is that we really don't know how many short term rentals there are in town. We've gotten some data off the, um, there's a group called Air DNA, which produces figures for towns. And as far as we know, we have somewhere at least 100 short term rentals, if not more. So, if you, I don't know how, how the select board feels. How much do they want to delve into all that? The 1% tax option. I've tried to get a hold of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns because we're not a chartered town. So right. it's not a charter amendment. So I was trying to find out what was the process. Do we call it an ordinance? What do we do? How do we go about it? So I, I've tried to get a hold of them three or four times and never heard anything back. So I'll keep trying. That would be great. I mean, um, it's a way. It's a way to offset the cost of a short-term rental administrator. So. I don't know. How does everyone feel? Yeah. How do we all feel? I feel confused. <laughs> <laughs> I feel cautiously <laughs> excited. <laughs> I'm a little in between both. It, it's it's definitely. Yeah, that's a vibe. Yeah, it's definitely a lot to think about. You know, it would be in more administrative work. So, to, to me, the biggest question is who's going to handle it for the town. Have you drawn up a temporary or a draft of the ordinance? Yes. Is that something you could forward along so we can review? Yeah. And then once you get that information from the LCT send that along so we can review all of that and then maybe have another bigger discussion at our next meeting. I mean, going in the tax option. That too. Is, yeah, is, is going to be a big question mark. It's good. Yeah. I'm not sure how much administratively that would cost. I mean, I'm sure the treasurer has to be involved in that. Mm -hmm. So we have to get Melissa sure. here. I'm not sure how much more. It's mostly that the state of Vermont deals with the Airbnb people and they collect the 1% for the town and then they keep a piece of it and they give us a piece of it. So. Hmm. You mentioned something about the first five towns. Would you oh, go yes. over that? That's right, the caveat. Um, the <laughs> legislature didn't want to overwhelm the, the tax department with, because there are about 150 towns in Vermont that haven't instituted the 1% uh, tax option on any way. And so they, in order to limit the impact for the tax department, they mandated that only five towns per year can institute the tax. Mm. So the first five who put their uh, applications in this year will get in, the rest of them will be staggered out to however many years it goes. So yeah, if we want to be part of the first year, we need to jump on it pretty quick. I don't know how everyone else feels, but I feel like we need more information. It definitely on the process. I think yeah. we need to know, if, is this something we have to bring up? Town meeting. Oh, town that meeting too. Vote. That means that we can't do anything about it until next March. But I, because it really is a town decision. Yeah. Most all the ones that have been done so far have been on charter towns. So I don't, and it's an amendment to the charter. Mm -hmm. So I don't know with a non-charter town what the process is going to be. Everyone else have a comment, feeling, thought? I guess I'd also want to do some um, modeling to see, based on the number of um, Airbnbs that we think we have, based on the number of nights that we think they're being rented, how much would this tax bring in? And um, is it worth the, if that's the only reason for doing this, is it worth the effort um, to yeah. go for it? So. All I know is that Wilmington got about $800,000 last year 
from all of their one percent tax, but they have rooms and sales and meals. Right, so and the numbers that they must be talking about, I'm sure, are different from us. Yeah, I mean, they're much more than us. So, yeah, again, I mean, that's why the short term rental registry would be help at least to give us some idea of what we've got. I mean, what is the scope of it? And is it worth it to go ahead and do anything more than just register short term rentals and that's it? Yeah. You know, Dover, what their proposal was. <clears throat> The registration fee was the average cost of one night stay for all of their current short term rentals. And that was approximately $350 to start with the option to go higher as those numbers change. Um, most towns have done a differentiation between hosted, where the owner lives in the, on the site and rents out rooms or apartment on their property versus unhosted, which is that the owner does not live on the property. Um, most towns, some towns, um, Killington, it's a huge difference between hosted and unhosted. Like a couple thousand dollars from unhosted. Wow. So it's huge. Some towns it's very small. It's only um, one town I looked at was $40 for hosted and $50 plus $100 for each bedroom in an unhosted one. So again, there's a lot of variation. You know, you, you look at all the different short-term rental agreements, every one of them is completely different. So hmm. it's going to take a little thought. And, and that's why even just institute some kind of registry to begin with and find out what the number is. Is this really worth putting a lot of effort into or not for us? And Maybe will Airbnb, for example, simply tell us where we stand right now, or does it require that we have some instituted policy before they would give us any information? Um, we have to have some adopted ordinance. I think. For the, for the state to recognize it, yeah. So maybe if we could collect these this information that we need to make a bigger mm -hmm. decision, providing VLCT can get back to you. They're, yeah. Are you emailing or calling? I emailed them twice last week and today yeah, I call. Usually they're, they're very accepted. Hmm. Um, With that and the, the um, draft of what you have for an ordinance and then talk, yeah. the estimate of how many we have, and we can start our bigger discussion with all of that information after we can see. Mm -hmm. I like to read. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you're, if the ordinance, the way it's worded now, if, if it's not satisfactory, we can do drafts of that, obviously changes. Yeah, if, so if you yeah. could, if the Planning Commission could send that along to the board yeah. members and then uh, maybe you could come back on June 17th and we can have another bigger discussion. <laughs> So Maybe I'll look her. Here's open. Yeah, and just send along the information for informational purposes, and then we can have it for our discussion, and hopefully get started on something. Yeah, just just to know how much of an impact people have the impression that the reason there's no good rentals for long term is because there's so many short term rentals in town now. We don't know how many short term rentals there are in town now, so we don't really know if it has an impact. Anymore, so. That's really kind of the first step. That sounds like a good first step. Okay. Thank you, Jane. And thank you to the Planning Commission for all your hard work. Mm -hmm. Pass that along. Anything else for Jane? No, I think I think that covered it from my end. My main my main concern would be not punishing people renting a single room. Like because I do think I know plenty of people who have one room and they rent it out on the weekends and it, it helps them make a little bit of extra and it's not a big deal. And that I think should be viewed very differently than like the woman I met last year from Connecticut who was like, oh, I just bought a house in Newfane. And I was like, oh, welcome. When are you moving? She goes, oh, no, we just we have 15 houses around Vermont and we just Airbnb them. And I think it's a very different thing. Like people who are buying properties simply as a hotel 
should be taxed and feed and fined as if they were a hotel. Right. They should not be paying regular property tax. They should be paying rooms and meals tax and everything else that the guys down at the West River Lodge have to pay us. That all those fees should be the same. If you're going to buy a house and only use it as a hotel, you should be paying for that. So I would definitely be in favor of us implementing not a small, not a small registration fee, but a pretty good one. If your only goal is to have a house as Income. as the hotel All in right. our town. I mean, one, one BBR own house in town that's being rented is for $2,200 a night. Wow. Yeah. For, for a weekend, yeah. So there is a lot of money floating around with that. You know, the 1% may seem pretty small, but like I said, it can add up to quite a bit of money for the town. Well, I think it, it would. The other, the other really good thing about the ordinance is that it requires that they prove they have a Vermont business license, that they haven't had a fire marshal inspection, all the things that they're supposed to do legally, mm -hmm. but right now we have no way of enforcing or knowing that it's being done. Okay, so we'll get all this information and get started on that and let's all plan to have a big discussion about it on the 17th. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you so much. All right, to be continued. Now we'll go to Juanetta. Good evening for your administrative assistance report. Good evening. It's a little bit lengthy tonight, I'm sorry. That's okay. <coughs> I have received an amendment from Michael LaPointe for the NRCS Financial Assistance Fund, increasing New Fane's to 100% of the estimated construction cost of Rock River work at the Dover Air Show intersection. This amendment significantly impacts the town and landowner's financial obligation and requires your attention. Any Expenses incurred before the amendment that exceeds the funds obligated in the agreement will not be eligible for reimbursement. It would be best if we could make a motion to have the chair sign the amendment and your attention to this matter is greatly appreciated. On June 21st from 1.30 to 2.30, the select board is invited to a regional policing information meeting at the Sheriff's Office on Old Ferry Road. Your presence and input at this meeting are highly valued. Would you like me to RSVP for you? Carol has advised me that the cost to receive an index and set of pocket parts for the Vermont statutes which are our green books that we use to look up statutes, will cost $401.50 per recipient this year. The publisher in the past has provided these at no cost. Most municipalities have drivers of commercial motor vehicles on staff, and federal transportation safety law requires that all commercial vehicle drivers be randomly tested for drugs or alcohol. Passive, which is our insurance coverage, is a member that can easily help us comply with this and related elements of the regulations. With the assistance from our partners at DSA Global Incorporated, as New Fates DER, Designated Employee Representative, this Friday, June 7th, there is a training. I would like to change my hours on Friday in order to, to attend this training, which is from 1 to 3.30. On May 23rd, Wade Mishore from VLCT Lost Control Division completed an inspection at the town office and Williamsville Hall. There are two corrections for the hall. Countryside Alarm will inspect the fire alarm system and the newly installed outside railing needs a graspable, a graspable one and a quarter to two inch diameter rail placed on top of the two by four board railings. I've been taking classes at Office Dynamics International, an executive support series, 
and I would like to meet with you privately to discuss some of the communication recommendations. I have used Grammarly program with support, improving my writing and grammar skills. This has changed my thoughts about how to write. Wyndham Regional and the Wyndham, Wyndham Windsor Trust held an informational meeting. The purpose of the meeting was to provide information to assist towns in finding resources to work on regional issues. Wyndham Regional Commission presented improved bylaw modernizational and zoning recommendations, infrastructure planning and funding sources, and encouraged community engagement by holding informational updates, newspaper articles, front porch forum, or website postings. Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust shared resources, financial resources. They also have a housing trust program and a Green Mountain Home Repair, which is a low cost loans with shared equity in home ownership. There is also a couple of uh, business issues that we need to take care of. Reappointing the fire warden, Todd Lawley for a four year, and then I have a letter for Katie Bristol, and Carol has included a memo that she is looking at renewing the liquor and tobacco license for the new phase store. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the administrative assistance report? No question. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Is there a second? Anyone? Second? What's second? Thank you, Jeff. Discussion. Is there a motion for the chair to sign this amended agreement for the Dover Road Parish Hill intersection? Construction. Yes, I, I make such a motion. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll make a motion. Or a second. Thank you. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ayes have it. Great. <laughs> um, I will try to get the time to go to the regional meeting for the sheriff's department. I went last year, it was informative, so I will do my best to be there. Please, that uh, RSVP for me as well. Thank you. Great. Uh, I thought I had seen an email through my work that one set of books might there, there's discussion being provided, and then anything over the one set is additional cost. There's discussion among the uh, town town clerks now that there could be limited funds available in Montpelier for anybody that's requesting the written ones, but they're all online too. They they are all online. I go to them frequently to look up and and review the, the bylaws, but there's nobody that comes in from outside of the office that would need to look at them. So is Carol going to look and see if there's funds available or? We're waiting to, to find out how many people are actually requesting the, the physical copies. So we really don't need to do anything with that at this not, moment? Not as of yet. All right, well, if it's an issue, we'll table it till the next meeting. Okay. If that's all right with everyone? Definitely. Great. Uh, and then Friday, you want to change your hours to? Yeah, we come in later and stay longer. So you normally work four hours. So mm -hmm. you come in at noon and work until four. Is that what you're asking? I don't see a problem with it as long as we can get the minutes and stuff done by Thursday. Mm -hmm. That should be fine. Uh, everyone else agree that that's okay? Yeah, I agree. Great. Um, and the Williamsville Hall work is Steve Levine and his group. 
Um, Where is all of this? I've already contacted Countryside Alarm and they are putting us on a schedule to come and inspect it. Great. It was overlooked because it's downstairs off the kitchen in a back room and it it didn't get a, an updated sticker. So he he asked that that be taken care of as soon as possible. If Yes, if they could just be reminded, that's a yearly thing that needs to be done, so that's yeah. we could put it on their schedule. Yeah, that would be great. And about the rail? Um, Is I, that here or at the Williamsville Hall? That's at the Williamsville Hall. So the the outside stair that was recently put in, it currently has a 2 by 4 yeah. railing. He says it needs to have a graspable so that it, people can actually hold on to it. So are they looking into that as well? Yep. Great. Um, and when would you like to meet? I and mean, would you like to meet with the whole board? Or I'm sorry if I could go back just one second. Just that yes. last item. If you could just make sure when that it's to track that and let us know when it's completed. Absolutely. Um, there's a deadline of July 15th in order for me to update with Wade on the um, completion of those projects. Great. Okay, great. Yeah. Great. And you wanted to meet with the board, you want to meet with everyone? It's totally or whoever did your review last, but that was discussed to take the class. Mm -hmm. what, what is your preference? I'm open to any and all. Um, we can do that. We can do an executive session at the next meeting if everyone's agreeable. Would that work? Absolutely. That would work. Great. You put that at the end of the meeting. That'd be awesome. Um, and do you have on number seven all of this information available for people to look at at some somewhere? Um, yes, I do. Which um, they provided me with handouts. So I'll, I'll make copies and scan them to you or email them to you. That'd be great. Yeah. And maybe if it's appropriate to put on the website, just mm -hmm. for people, the public to be able to see. Yeah. Because it looks like things that the public should be made aware of as well. Okay, and keeping going. So we don't have to do anything for the renewal. Carol's already done that. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. um, we have to reappoint fire work. And is there a motion to reappoint Todd Lolly as our fire warden? I make a motion. Yes. Would you like to second, Anne? Can you make a motion? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Ayes have it. Will you please send him out a letter? Oh, great. It requires the select board to sign. So, at your earliest convenience, please come on in and sign this letter. And this is required to hold the left for Yes, please all of us, yeah. Um, and if you're away, we can want to scan and scan. email it for a digital signature if you'd like. Perfect, perfect, thank you. And we have the new zoning administrator letter. Yes. And since it seems like it's going well, is there a motion for me to sign this letter to send to Katie for her signature? I make such a motion. I second. Great. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ayes have it. Everything is going so smoothly. All right. Any further discussion on the administrative assistance report? Hearing none, all those in favor to accept, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, ayes have it. Thank you so much, Juanetta. A lot of information tonight. <laughs> there was a lot. It a whole month. <laughs> okay, moving right along, I'd like to welcome Bill Gunther, our tree warden. Er, Tree Warden, is yes. that what we call you? <laughs> You're here to talk about the Emerald Ash Borer. The floor is yours, sir. Glad to have you. Excuse me. This is the rock today. This is my sign off, so thank you, everyone. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.
night. Thank you. I'll see you Wednesday or Tuesday. Wednesday. Are you Wednesday? We're meeting the website. Oh. The floor is yours, Master. Hi, Angela. Yes. Welcome. Uh, Emerald Ash Four. Um, well, first off, I, for those of you who don't want to know me, I was the captain of the county forester for 32 years um, and retired in 2018. And I had hoped before I retired, I would not have to deal with several invasive insects that are invading our forests. The first one has been here a while, Hemlock Willie Delgid, Emerald Ash Four. It's the second one, Asian Longhorn Beetle. They're all very bad news, and they can kill our native trees. Mm -hmm. The uh, I I did send to uh, Winetta. Mm -hmm. It was kind of last minute, Winetta, and I don't know. Oh, you, you yeah, guys got it. Okay, you got a chance to see that in two pages. It's a good encapsulation of uh, what the problem is, and it's not good. <laughs> I will say. Um, a little background on the insect, uh, it was introduced in Detroit from our friends from China on some sort of wood product, we don't know exactly where, but all of a sudden Detroit had, uh, had a bunch of beautiful elms and they got wiped out with Dutch elm disease back in the early uh, 20th century. And then what happened was they decided to plant a whole lot of green ash throughout the city. And that is a species that's, that we do have a little bit of down here. We mostly have white ash. There are three native ashes, black, usually goes in swamps, green, you usually find up around the islands in Chittenden County, and then white ash is what we typically, 99% of the ash you're going to see in our woods in Wyndham County will be white ash. This insect impacts all three of those. It was introduced in Detroit in 2002. It does fly. It spreads roughly about a half a mile a year. Uh, it, and I kept praying I, I'd be retired before this got here, but it got here the year I retired in 2018. It was found in Washington County uh, in an area right where Washington and Caledonia kind of come together. Uh, since then, it has spread throughout many other areas throughout the state. Now, I'll show you a map. I meant to send this one in. Uh, the green is basically where ash species grow. The red dots are all of the areas in which they have been found. So you can see yeah. that it's, and there's even a section in Colorado where they have supplanted ash and those got attacked. So this thing is jumping and going a lot farther mm. than we thought. Uh, one of the ways to identify it, um, and do I have about 10 minutes or so, I think you said? I'm going to try mm -hmm. to run through this. Okay, uh, the mortality rate is 99.8%. I am my gla glass three quarters full person. That sounds really bad when you say 99.8. So if you take a thousand trees that are out in the woods, that means 998 of them. The math is a little easier from up to, you know, tower of three. So that means basically two out of a thousand trees will likely not be um, infested by this insect. Uh, one of the ways in which to determine it, and this has changed through the years, but it's something that we call blonde. And what blonding is, it's a term the entomologist came up with. Those of you who are very familiar with ash know that as ash gets larger, it has a real thick, corky bark to mm -hmm. it. This insect is what is called a cambial miner. And the cambium is simply the layer between the bark and the wood. So it bores into the tree, and then it mines in these S-shaped curves and eventually, as the tree gets totally infested, the cambium is killed. And once the cambium of the tree is killed, it's doomed. I mean, it's, the tree yeah. is going to die. Uh, so that's an important concept. And it's diagnostic in that, and I had, I logged on my land. I heated my house off my land since I moved down here in 87. 
And uh, when we logged last year, this spring, I <clears throat> was working up some of the tops. And I had six experts look at this at the Society of American Forces Conference, and I had our department look at it, and it's been confirmed. So if you look at this S shape, there and there, there's a little one there, but this is kind of the major one that you're going to see, and then that one there. There's no other bore that does that. There are four other native bores in, uh, in the U.S. that attack ash, but none of them leave that distinctive note. So based simply on this, without seeing the insect, here we're seeing what we call a symptom and not a sign. But they said, yes, that is an old ash bore. So they have put new thing. Unfortunately, on the list, uh, last year I had a premonition. I was going to find it somewhere. And I was walking along the signal pine road in Putney. And lo and behold, I looked at an ash. And Richard Bissell, the woodworker who makes wonderful Yankee uh, furniture, uh, he's got it on his property. So when you look at the dots around the mine, it's here. And uh, the easiest way to detect it, I mentioned the word blonde. Yes. So our woodpecker friends that go after insects, you know, typically you see a, you know, if you be affiliated, they're going to make a big hole in the tree because they're actually going in the wood. But this insect stays between the bark and the wood. So what the, what the woodpeckers will do is they'll peck at the tree but they don't need to peck too deeply. They just need to get inside the bark, not into the wood. And once they do that, that bark that's normally fairly dark in, a, in let's say, a 12-inch or larger tree, you're going to have about that much bark, almost a half inch of bark on each side. That's going to be pecked, and that darker bark will have what's called blonding, which is a lighter effect. So it's, it's pecked at the bark, and it's exposed the inner bark, which is younger and a lighter color. That is now the best way to determine whether you have it. And I have three trees, three big ash on my property I have studied. And when we logged last year, I cut one of the three because it had some crown like that. And the upper branches were starting to die in places. Um, once I saw that, I made the decision to cut it. We cut it last March 7th, and with the crazy winter we had, I didn't get to start working things up. I actually had bare ground on March 4th up in Bench Mountain, which is not normal. <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, I'll start working on some of the wood, because I had a lot, of, a lot of things we had to drop. We mostly logged right around the, the edge of my property, around the house. And I took several pieces of ash, the ones I showed you, and brought them in the cellar, took out the chisel, and lo and behold, it's here. So what does that mean? <laughs> uh, those of you who, who, who burns wood here, by the way, okay? so you probably have heard the old adage in Vermont that you know if you run out of wood in March, what do you do? You cut down an ash tree. And you can pretty much almost throw it right in your stove as soon as you cut it, because it's dry. And that's because it's what's called a ring porous species. Ash, hickory, oak, I don't want to get too far into biology, but they're, that's how you can count the rings real easy, on an oak, a hickory, an ash. Um, but what that means is, is those big vessels that you see that makes it easy to count the rings, that dries the wood out even more once a tree is infested. So a tree can be infested and not look that bad, but if you go to try to fell that tree, it could crack into multiple, multiple pieces. It's an extreme hazard. I've cut one in the lash board tree, and it scared the hell out of me, frankly. <laughs> this whole thing just broke apart. So, I don't want to sound gloom and doom, but it's, it's here we need to try to come up with a plan for it. My understanding is, and, and maybe we want to get a legal opinion, but I believe if trees are in the town right away, and most of our roads are three rods, and the rod's 16.5 feet, so 49 and a half feet wide, 
or 24 feet 9 inches off the center line mm -hmm. on either side, we would likely be responsible for. Uh, now, the power company has also been involved, and some of you may have noticed in your Green Mountain Power Bill that they had a charge for mm -hmm. Emerald Ash Borer <laughs> to cover some of these costs of removal. Um, one thing that's interesting to note is, is ash is 6%. And this is not a, it was a little higher than I thought it would be, but it's 6% of the tree volume in the state of Vermont. So it's significant, you know, it's, so it's 1 16th. That's a, that's a pretty big chunk. So the question is, what do we do? Well, typically the first process is, is the inventory and find out where your ash are. And I talked to Greg a couple times about this <laughs> and the Conservation Commission to see if they would be willing to go through some training that my, my old department, Forest Parks and Recreation, they do offer a training session. And I said, well, a lot of us are Luddites. Like, you know, I don't even own a cell phone. <laughs> there's no coverage up there. Um, and they, they, they can basically offer the training in two different ways. There's one way where there is an app. You can do it on an iPhone. Another way where you can do it low tech on paper. So Joanne Garten who is in my department. She is one of the specialists in that section. She would be the one that would be offering the training. So that's possible. Uh, my old boss, who's retired now living up to Athens, he's the tree warden there. He would be interested in attending the training. And there's another group in Ludlow. So if we got a core group of people, mm -hmm. would they be more efficient? Because she's got to come all the way down from Burlington. Mm -hmm. So she would offer that. So the inventory part, would be a pretty important stage. Like, how many do we have? And I believe, Greg, did you mention that? Was it? Uh, oh, um, that there was a count done, or sort of a real rough count done by Jay. Jay, yeah. Yeah. So he did kind of a quick and dirty sort of real well smart road for me. I think they did a quick and dirty. Along the road, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I just walk my. Half mile road, Bench Mountain Road, from Wistful Hill down to the end, where the nasty signs are. I moved in. I'm still trying to figure it out, but anyways, and just in that stretch within the right away, I counted like 30 some ash trees yeah, okay. on a half a mile. So some roads are not going to have many. It depends upon the, the you know the elevation the type of soil that they have. I mean, ash likes a, a pretty fertile soil. You're not going to find it in like a deep sandy soil or a poorly drained soil. It likes, you know, good dirt. Do but, these have a side, a big directional choice too? Like oak trees aren't so fond of being on the north side of hills and things like that? Um, it can vary with ash. You can okay. find it on the south slope or a north slope. And, and oak, you often see more on a south slope. And some trees will prefer that because they're going to get more sunlight, especially the real sun-loving trees. Um, so I guess my thoughts are is I, I decided to come back as the tree warden. I Thank resigned you. after <laughs> a little disagreement we had over the Williamsville yep. the firehouse. <laughs> Which was a very great presentation, by the way. Thank you for oh, that. Thank you. <laughs> well, I went a long way, but I wanted to give people, I mean, I talked about everything from the roots to the top of the tree. What was wrong with that tree? That was an ash tree. Excuse me? That was an ash tree. Just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still, I still miss that tree. <laughs> yeah, it's a great tree. Now, people think that was an old growth tree. That tree wasn't 100 years old when I looked at the rings. Like, it was like 78 years old. And I talked to Chris Williams about it. And, of course, you know, kind of being the mayor of Williamsville, he put some insight into it. But it was not that old a tree. I mean, it had growth rings this wide. It was yeah. real big. So it's here, and we got to, we got to plan for it. And the hazard is, is once a tree, as I said, is infested, even if you don't see this blonding that I described, the tree could still be infested enough to where that wood is drying out mm -hmm. even more. And once, once you've got an infested tree, it's almost impossible to walk up to it with a chainsaw and say you're going to fell that tree. So you're looking at 
using bucket loads and, and cranes. The cranes process. Which isn't cheap. Right. Um, I've got to tie back into my department a little more and see what kind of monies might be available for grants. I know we can get the training for the inventory for free, but the real catch is going to be, you know, are there funds we can draw on for removal? And there's some differences of, the, of opinion as to whether or not you go sort of prophylactic or you wait till the end stage, meaning, you know, you wait till you see blonding all over the tree and then you try to take it or down. Just go through, or you just say, okay, these trees are going to get nailed and we might as well take them down now. So what I'm going to try to do is go around to some different points around town. And the two other big ash that I have, I've got, I've got two that are three log trees. They got three 16 foot veneer logs in them. And neither of those trees I looked at with binoculars the other day, which was probably really bright, showed any sign of blonding. And this tree that I cut does have it. That one I didn't look at as carefully. The other two trees are my study trees because I can stand on the lawn, I can look, they're right next to the power line right away, so I can see them real easily. So I can look at them from the front yard and I walk down the town road and see the other side. I'm gonna look a little closer, but I do wanna kind of get around town and look at some different spots and see if I can pick up anything else. But again, their, their flight distance is roughly half a mile a year wow. with the spread in the sun. So at this point, we're looking at just doing another estimate of what we have in the right room right away, and then the training. Yeah. And you'll let us know when that's been scheduled for yeah, anybody who wants I, to I, I had a chance to catch up with Greg to see if they're, they're still interested. I know you said, Greg, most of you guys are, are kind of luddites on and, uh, and the department can handle that. They've got a system, a training okay. that they can do for inventory. Um, the question's going to be the cost. Right. Uh, you know, and who's going to pay for it. And one challenge is you can have a tree out of the town right away. Let's say you've got a big 30-inch you know, diameter ash and nothing else around it. And it's got a real heavy lean toward the road. Well, if it's, say, 30 or 40 feet away from the road, then, okay, is that, is that going to be the landowner's responsibility right. to remove? So you get into some tricky legal questions. When I was the county forester, people would always ask me, well, you know, should I cut this tree or not? And I said, our department policy is I don't tell you to cut it or leave it. <laughs> what I do is I give you all the information about what I see, similar to what I did in Williamsville mm -hmm. that night. And, um, so that's sort of where we are. <laughs> Right. And culling is the only solution. There's nothing that you can inoculate the tree with or anything Great like that. Question, Katie. Um, there are a couple things going on. There are some native beetles that do uh, attack this insect in China. And a group from UVM and my department traveled over to China and, and did a study several years ago and looked at these different ends. And there are three, I think there were three that they were looking at. We brought these beetles here, we've released them, and we've gotten some, so far, some results that uh, they're not terrible, but they're not great. It's, what you have to do is if you introduce an insect to take out another insect, one, you've got to make sure you don't introduce something that's going to create more harm. And right. that's the real challenge, you know, in today's mm -hmm. world. Um, so that is a possibility. So far, we don't see that in those Laracobius, I think they're called, uh, insects. I think that's the generic, uh, the general name. Uh, that they don't seem to go after any other species. That they just simply try to go after the ash borers. So that's one possibility. The other thing, and coming back directly to your question, Katie, if you've got, let's say, a prized ash on your lawn, you can treat it with a systemic insecticide. So what that would mean, the typical process that we use is now there's a special tool called an injector. You basically bash the tree with this. It's got a sharp knife, and then at the same time, it injects a chemical. Now, here's another problem. <laughs> The chemical that worked best was something called metoclopride. 
And that one, <laughs> we hear a lot about insecticides and pollinator issues. Mm -hmm. There are some issues there. And frankly, having been retired and a little out of the game, so I'll try to do some research and find out what may be possible to use now that's not going to cause problems with pollinators. The thing is, it's not cheap. You pay for it by the diameter of inch of the tree. So if you have a 20 inch diameter tree, and I meant to look up what the cost was when I retired, but I believe a 20 inch tree is going to cost you at least somewhere between two and four hundred dollars. Don't fight quote on that, but two to four hundred might be a range. But, however, that treatment is essentially good for two to three years. So after that time period, you would then have to continue to repeat that treatment gotcha. to keep that tree going. Um, so in the meantime, you'll be discussing with our conservation committee and our road foreman and get back to us and let us know. Yeah, and I'll see if, if there are any other volunteers. What I'll probably do yeah. is maybe do a write-up on the Front Porch Forum. You know, that's great. A, a great tool and see if folks are interested. One of the challenges, obviously, when you do this with folks who are not foresters is some people are better than others at identifying the tree. If it's winter, actually, they're easier to identify because it has a big compound leaf and when you look at our hardwood trees, they have branching patterns that are either what are called opposite or alternate. And mm -hmm. an opposite would be, okay, you've got a main branch and then you've got little branches coming off, but they're directly opposed from each other. Mm -hmm. So, Like a white pine. Uh, well, white pine, yeah, white pine would be, uh, I guess I should stick to hardwoods. Oh, and, and not, yeah, mm -hmm. but, but white pines have what are called worlds. And you can actually you can age a tree. Each one of those worlds is one year. So you can look at the worlds about the tree. But in the case of hardwoods, though, uh, we don't have that many opposites. There's a code word I was taught years ago at the UVM called Mad Cat Horse. And those are the, it's an easy way to remember what are um, the trees that have opposite branching. Maples, ashes, dogwoods, Caprifoliaceae, that's a big word, but it's the family that uh, a, a good example would be viburnums or in the Caprifoliaceae, mm -hmm. so they're going to have opposite branching. And then uh, horses, horse chestnut, that's a species that's rarely here. So you can almost take that one out of the mix and you can kind of take the Caprifoliaceae out because they're shrubs, meaning they don't grow over 25 feet. Dogwoods are sort of in that category. So, bottom line, is if you see opposite branching, it's going to probably it's going to be a maple or an ash. Okay. And if it's got thick branches, it's going to likely be an ash because it's got a hold that big. It has a compound leaf, not a simple single leaf. Though. Okay. So that's sort of where we are. More information to come. <laughs> Thank you. But I any any other questions? No, yeah. that's great. Well, well not for me. <clears throat> Katie? The, um, I just have to express that the idea of culling that number of trees is, makes me nauseous. <laughs> but oh, that's I'm sorry, that's I didn't quite catch what you said. The, the, the tentative number that we had discussed prior was about 1,500 trees. The idea of culling that many is a nauseating number. I just, I can't imagine the expense of that. That's Yeah, well, I'm trying to Right, we have something like this. It's 62 miles at Town Road, and is that about right for mm -hmm. Timothy? Yeah, so we have a lot of mileage, and, and if the town stuff that we would be responsible for the state, they would do their own thing, you know, on the route yeah. third quarter on the class one roads. Yeah. When we spoke, did you were you able to contact anybody from Green Mountain Power about their assistance or if they had plans of doing any of the work? Uh, I I, con I tried to contact one of their arborists that I had uh, some back and forth with. <laughs> they cut some trees that village trees planted along the Dover Road. And I was a little ticked off when they moved the power lines back closer to the road. And, mm -hmm. uh, but and they basically I have a promise from them, that, and this was this was 
seven or eight years ago though, that they would replant those trees. So I tried to contact their arborist and did not get a reply. So I don't know if he's, they had a lot of changes in GMP. I mean, when the merger happened, a lot um, changed. I was the only shareholder. I had one share, but I showed up at Robin and fought the merger, but it was a losing battle because the stock went up 42% in one weekend. So the CPPS executives came out well. And what GMP has done now is they've cut their forestry staff. CPPS used to have 12 foresters. Mm -hmm. GMP, when I retired, has a total of two to cover the whole state. Yeah, well. And a lot of the work that's being done is really good quality. So, um, well, I, well, I'm going to follow up and find out where they are, what their responsibilities are. Uh, what I'm hoping they're going to say is, okay, if there is a tree on the town road, and if the tree fails and falls, it's going to take out the line, we'll cover it. That's what I'm hoping they're going to say. Good luck. So we'd like to invite you back when you have further information for us. and. We get things started. Maybe we can go okay. through it with a group and find out where all these trees are. Yeah, it's. I know, I'm sorry to be the bearer, but not the best news, but it is what it is. It yeah, is. is but at least we have somebody looking into it, so that's good. Globalism's done some wonderful things, but in terms of, of you know some of the trade that goes on, and unfortunately, the Chinese are not careful about fumigating a lot of the things that they send us. <laughs> So some are in probably a wood product of some sort that came into Long Beach, yeah. California. It got sent out and went to Detroit, or came in, excuse me, came into the, the, the port of Detroit. Now yeah, it's going nationwide. And people in Detroit didn't know what was going on. All of a sudden, these ash that they had planted to replace the, uh, the elm trees that were killed, they didn't know what was going on, so they started cutting these trees down. A lot of folks in Detroit have camps up to the, you know, the Upper Peninsula. And all of a sudden, the Upper Peninsula had ash trees sign. Well, then the entomologists got involved and yeah. said, okay, this is what's going on. So, well, so I'll do a little more research and... Uh, Come back and let us know. Happy to report back and I need to check in with Greg, see what Sounds the... Sounds good. Commission might be willing to do and, and if we could get some other volunteers, mm. people that know how to identify them. I mean, I can I can teach people the traits to look for. Again, with the leaves on, it's a little harder because you can't see the opposite right. branching as well. But. Well, let us know and maybe some of us will be a part of your group. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Bill. Bill. It's always a yeah, pleasure. And, uh, one of the things that blessing I need to mention is you know, throughout walking, doing surveys, there's always a question about traffic, you know, whether you need to do some sort of traffic control. So probably folks that are doing it, especially on busy roads, my road, you don't have to worry, you're just going through this. Um, but maybe talk to Jay about whether we can get some cones yep. out and some way to identify that, you know, there's a, you see those signs that say, you know, survey crew. Right, we'll cross that so, bridge when we get there, and when we have a date, we'll get it all worked out. Okay. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Yep, you're very welcome. All right. We'll talk with you soon. More to come. Okay. And now we have Greg Record, who's here on the Conservation Committee, and about Laura's Landing. The floor is yours, sir. Did you guys quote? Did you have to make a decision on? Did everybody read the email that I had forwarded along? Yes. Uh, Greg met with Mark Fallon Jr. and a worker and Corey Nystrom and Scott Chase to go over what needed to be done. Both bids are more than, bidders are more than qualified to do the work and it should be completed before July 1st. Um, also understand that the new thing, Board of Selectmen will make the decision on who to hire and the town of New Fane will pay the bill. Um, Fallon's bid was 1300 and Nystrom Chase bid was 1100 There you have it. Is there a motion for who to do this work on Laura's Landing? I make a motion for the Nystrom Chase bid at $1,100. Second? I will second. Discussion? I'd like to thank you for going out and getting that done no, as requested. No. It's much appreciated. No problem. Um, would you like me to call your son? Are you going to see him or? 
So I, I can let him know. Let him know. Yeah. And I'll get a hold of. And let them know that I've done the minimum. Perfect. And then, and then, could you please bring us a photograph if we can't get out there to uh, oh, see yeah. the view? Oh yeah, the view, the, the, the restored nice. view. I'll take it before and after. I would Fantastic. Love that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All those in favor of approve of the nice room chase bid? Say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstention. Ayes have it. Great. Thank you so. Oh, no, Bill. Just a quick comment. I, I, I was on the conservation commission at the time, and actually, Greg and I did it. We were a little younger then. <laughs> what was that? Twenty-five years ago, Greg. Right? Yeah. And uh, and we did it all all then, and it was uh, it was a, a fun job. But I think you know it's probably kind of gotten beyond us. So, so but it's a, a very worthwhile. It's a great view. It adds a whole lot to our trail system when you come to that. You sit at the bench. Well, I and, cannot uh, wait. I appreciate you folks supporting that. I think it's money well spent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow for the yeah. next meeting. Right. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yes, sir. Yep. All right. Moving right along to unscheduled members of the public. Hi. Uh, hi. I'm Anna um, Hi. Welcome. Um, I live right next to the Lanesville Hall, and mm -hmm. I don't know if Jay will send that to us because I did email him about it. Um, but there, coincidentally, is an ash uh, tree between my house and the hall. Mm -hmm. um, well, okay, so I guess the whole thing is that there's um, the previous owner was having issues where when the plow would go by in the winter, his car was getting dinged because there's like very little space between right. the house and that. So he built this really janky structure um, that has a retaining wall made of rubber tires filled with dirt. Then he has cinder, bl cinder blocks, and then he has a wooden carport on top of that. So he would park his car on that, and so it's kind of like crumbling. And so I, my sister and I bought the house anticipating that we'd be putting in like tens of thousands of dollars of work into fixing that. Um, work was supposed to start this spring, but there's an ash tree and it's on the prop, uh, the hall side of the property line, just by like one foot. Mm -hmm. um, and its roots are, you know, kind of complicating the construction process, okay. especially with, um, we had a tree guy look at it and he said, this tree probably has five years before it's dead if we don't go with the injection of pesticides. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I guess just here to express my concern about that tree um, potentially doing damage to the hall, my house. And well, it's um, nice that we have our tree board in yeah, there. Yeah, Dude, yeah, look yeah, at so that. Your name? I'm sorry. Your name? Emmett Medaffi. Emmett Medaffi. Yeah. Oh, are you uh, Lawrence? So, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. And now, which, which house? It, it, it's it's in Jim Grissom's old house. Oh, Jim Grissom's. Yeah. Okay. Cute little blue house. Yeah, because she. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we planted a number of green ash along there, and that was before EAB <laughs> was around. So, um, but I, I don't think we planted anything at Jim's because at that time the board would not let us plant anything in the right away. There was concern that. So we we actually I, I took a big measure out a number of those trees that we planted, especially across the street from me on that house. I forget who owns it now, but they're 25 feet from the center point. You had it for the inches, but I, I've still got the records, but I'm not sure we planted anything. I, I, I have, do you know Bob Edingham? Uh, yeah, like, Bob, yeah, yeah, he, he's a great artist. Yeah, yeah he, I have another tree that I need taken down because it's like two feet away from my house. Yeah. And so I just like asked him to check out uh, the ash tree. So he confirmed it's an ash. So oh, okay. I do I do know for a fact that it is one. Um, and, and Bob's got good credentials. Yeah. He's a certified artist. Yeah. So I guess my I'm just coming here to like express my concern about that. Um, you know, it's a historic hall, and my house is yeah. historic too. Right. Is that um, the tree that's right in front of the hall that provides shade? Uh, no, it's not that one. That's that one's, one that one's fine. It's like there's three trees there. There's one right by the road. That one's fine. Mm -hmm. There's the ash, which is the middle one. That one is the one that I would really like to be removed. And then there's a silver maple, which is below that. That one's massive and it would be great if that one could be cabled because it's a beautiful tree, but I think silver maples can 
Mine would do eventually. Yeah. I'll take a look at it and give you an answer. I have it for you. I'm glad you come with this concern. My thought is is to have Jay and Bill get together with you to look at the tree and maybe with um, Steve Levine who's the chair of the hall committee and then let the board know what you what you find as the tree warden. Yeah, Does that so make sense? Sure exactly so it's right in front because with, with Jim's it's, property it's, it's like it it's on like so get together and just halfway down the, the, the bank. Oh, so you don't you don't notice it. So it's out of because what we did was we measured everything. Yeah, yeah. so it's out of the town right away. It's it's out of the town right away, but it's on town property because it's on the hall side. It's on the hall on side. The hall side. Yeah, so, I'm not exactly familiar with this yeah. You got to run right down yes. the middle between your house and the hall. What's that? Does your property line run like right down the middle between the house and the hall? I or? think so. There's like stone markers somewhere, uh, but yeah. Yeah, right survey. Yeah. Um, I haven't done a survey, no. But do, you, do you have a legal survey that might be registered with the town? Yeah. Gentlemen, can I make a suggestion that one out of get in touch with all of you and have an, a, to schedule a time to look yeah. at it and then no. with what you find, come back and then we'll, we can make a decision? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, okay, my last thing, thing to this. Yeah. <laughs> the last thing that I'll say is that like the work that we're gonna get done of like building up this retaining wall will also benefit the town mm. um, because, you know, holding up that land, you know, so I, I guess it would be Cool, this is cut half up. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> <it's> <laughs> and if one edit can get your information, that would yeah. be amazing. And then she can coordinate with everybody and then schedule a site visit just to see and then come back and let us know what between Jay and Bill and you what a solution could be to get that taken care of. Mm -hmm. Cool, thank you so much. Awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to share or address? No, this is. Really interesting. Well, welcome to your first <laughs> yeah, meeting. Yeah, thanks for keeping the Come show to going. <laughs> All right. If there's no other unscheduled members of the public, uh, new business review the Linden County Sheriff's Department contract, which is up at the end of this month. Is there much of a difference? No. About the same? Yes. And I did attach the STARS report. I saw that. Thank request. you so much. They have been very diligent. Uh, I've noticed them around uh, on my end of town, which is always nice because it was not happening for us. So, nice. so is there a motion to renew the Women County Sheriff's Department contract? Now that they're actually patrolling I make a motion. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you Thank guys. You both. Have fun. Okay. It looks pretty much the same. Uh, at least me too. Yeah, it's the twenty-five thousand dollars that we the town voted on, it's um, $64 per hour, and I think it is, it had um, the number of hours per month, 32 and a half hours per month, approximately. It's on page three, part B. Yep. So, is there a motion to uh, go sign? Uh, sorry, sign this contract for the sheriff's department for the next year. I make a motion to sign the contract. I'll second it. Any discussion? It's nice to see that they're doing more. I, I really like seeing them around. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Ayes have it. While we are discussing that contract, I did have a conversation today with Katie Robinson on Browns Road, and she mentioned that there was some signs, some posted speed limit signs that needed to be 
put back and she had talked to Deputy Granger or something like that. I had his own note. Oh, Gagney, Officer Gagney. And he said that he had spoken with somebody about the signs and they were supposed to be re-erected. 25 Jay miles Wilson. per hour and hidden, hidden driveway signs. Uh, that would be Jay, I believe, if we could mention that to Jay. Yeah. I have a whole list of signs for him to continue to replace. Yep. So I should mention that to him tomorrow? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Would you add in, please, that um, the speed limit signs at the bottom of the Williamsville Depot Road and the bottom of Browns Hill are replaced? I've reminded him twice, so I don't know how to make it better. Um, going into old business, municipal planning service, climate change, mitigation, and resilience. This is the thing from WRC. The what who? Sorry. This is the French cabin road. Um, I have a statement between work the municipal planning service. Yes. yes. Are you okay with that, Jeff? You can take yourself off mute, Jeff, if you want. It's just us. It's just us. Yeah. So you He's can like, not talk playing freely. Games. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's okay. There you go. Um, so we're, there we are. All right, we need, we're going to table number one of old business till everyone's here. Sounds good. Do you have an update on beautification? I reached out to Dale Stevens to the, uh, today. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from him. And I've reached out to about six other people with applications, trying to get them, trying to nudge them to get an application in. They all say they're interested. Uh, but I can't force anybody to do it. So. Right. Right. Okay. Um, well, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> I, I wish I had more time to dedicate to it, but it's like, the number of things that seem to fall through the cracks these days is getting sure. staggering. That's, uh, Jeff, were you able to hold a committee and vote on that bench approval? Or Not, not yet, no. Yeah. No, I'm waiting to hear back from three people on the committee. and Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll keep talking about it. <laughs> yep, we'll keep talking about it. It'll happen one day. Yep. All right, so FEMA of the Newton store, Ann is not here. Um, ARPA, I, if it's all right with everyone, I'd like to wait for the whole board. Mm -hmm. I think that's reasonable. And yep. shop policy? Not a. All right. Do you want me to um, put together the changes that you've already? No, I just need the computer to work that. Okay. <laughs> All right, do we have correspondence? No, other than the Lindis County invitation to the Sheriff's Department, there was nothing else. That's great. We're doing something good, I guess. We don't have any correspondence. <laughs> and we need a motion that Katie and I can approve pay orders. I make a motion. Second. I'll second it. We have uh, a motion. Well, it's either you or me. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're say aye. 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 Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. And with that, we're going to go right to pay order. Yes, and we hope you feel We're going to go into pay orders. I would like to thank everyone for being here tonight and all their hard work. And I would like to thank Austin for, as always, being our best videographer. You're amazing. And have a good night and stay safe, everyone. <laughs>